is uh, Mr. Hill for a period of five minutes. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Vice Chairman. Appreciate the topic of this hearing. You know, we, uh, we're here because uh, we keep having testimony on uh, monetary policy in this committee, and yet all of our regulators, when we talk about monetary policy, we're at zero, and we still have a, an economy that's subpar and not growing, and capital is not being allocated. So I'm glad we have a hearing today that talks about non-part monetary policy structural impediments to economic growth, which is what I think the topic is today. You know, we want to encourage private capital flows into institutional uh, corporate grade uh, commercial real estate. And these products are for institutional investors. And I think that's something that uh, all the members of the committee understand. We're talking about institutional products here, not products uh, being marketed to uh, retail investors. And secondly, in my view, in looking at the uh, proposal, proposed rules on uh, commercial mortgage backed securities, private capital flows will be severely curtailed under the proposed uh, regulatory rules that are being considered. And they're on top of the existing portfolio and Basel Capital rules that our, our panels talked about. Also, when I look at this topic, uh, the regulators' proposals for residential mortgage-backed securities are generous, are generous. And yet they were at the heart of the crisis. And yet in the uh, qualified approach to residential mortgages, 85% would qualify. But for commercial mortgage-backed securities, around which there were no demonstrated contribution to the crisis, these proposed rules will only have 3 to 8 percent of the market qualify. And that's back testing from 1997 through 2013 or so. So that's got to raise concerns that we are hurting private capital flows and that we're not being fair balanced as it relates to the commercial market. If you look at default rates, which to me is the, is the stress test. Who needs a stress test when we've been through the market that we've been through? So we've got it. We've got the data. And on the subject of single asset, single borrower securities, which is partially addressed in my draft, they only had 25 basis points as a historical loss ratio for, over that backtesting period. And if you include even 07, which was the worst year, it was 1.77% as a default rate, which is still, in the great scheme of life, if you're in the real world, not the academic world, that's a pretty good default rate. I also read in the Democratic comments uh, in the packet today that somehow people are concerned about cross-collateralization, that somehow that's a bad thing. I can tell you as a banker for 35 years, that's a dream thing. That's a good thing to have a single-asset, single-borrower entity that's cross-collateralized because it actually is in the creditor's favor and reduces the possibility of collapse of that asset category, not enhances it, as argued in uh, a memorandum from the opposition. And then uh, finally, I'm curious about um, the proposed rules for commercial mortgage exceptions that they're just, I don't know how they came up with these rules. Some of the parameters that we talk about in my draft might be appropriate in a community bank loan to an individual borrower, but they don't reflect the institutional market for commercial mortgage transactions, and so they don't seem to be well-placed, and I'm sure we'll have more conversation about that. But I'd like to ask a question of uh, Mr. Renna. Why is it even necessary for Congress to insert itself uh, in this uh, setting the rules, if you will, and trying to determine this qualified uh, rulemaking. Because, I mean, this has been going on for two years, and I'm, I'm trying to explain what interaction you've had with our regulators, what data you've provided them. Could you give us a snapshot of that, please? Absolutely. Thank you, Congressman. You did a terrific job summarizing what's going on in the CMBS industry. Uh, uh, with respect to why we are here asking Congress to intervene is that one, as I said in my opening statement, we acknowledge the daunting task that regulators had to administer Dodd-Frank and particularly with respect to risk retention. They told us we would love one broad-based elegant rule that applied to all asset classes. That would be the simplest way to do it. Unfortunately, the world is not a simple place. There are many different types of uh, asset-backed securities, CMBS is just one of them. They all have their own characteristics. What we tried to demonstrate to the regulators is that 
the, the way to achieve your risk retention goal, yet allow the industry to function as efficiently as possible, would be to accept these certain modifications we are requesting in our comment letter to you. The regu and one of those was with respect to exempting single asset, single borrower from risk retention for the basic and simple reason was it's not a conduit security. Time has expired. Gentlemen, Scott, I believe you passed.